The challenge that we have for not only this generation but future generations is to find alternative sources of both petrochemicals and the fuels that come from these sources. One of the other challenges that many countries have, including the United States, is to find domestic, stable, sustainable uh, supplies. This is something that we have to think about in order for future generations as well as this generation. With a rich and growing heritage of excellence in plant science, Washington State University is among those leading research to make biofuels and bioproducts economical and sustainable, especially for aviation and other transportation uses. Using the very latest technology and procedures, WSU scientists have an integrated research and development approach from basic plant science to cropping systems. They are working to unlock the biochemical secrets of breaking down woody biomass, such as forest waste and plantation raised poplars, to convert them into petroleum and petrochemical substitutes. The Pacific Northwest and the state of Washington in particular are unique in that they have a vast range of microclimates. We've been dealing with biomass for food for a long time here at Washington State University. So the challenge now is to look at the plants that will grow and other materials that can be produced in these microclimates and figure out how to optimize those production systems so that they make fuels very efficiently. Plants, especially field crops such as camelina and woody biomass, are at the center of all WSU's work in biofuels and bioproducts. Petroleum is extremely cheap, gasoline is cheap. And how do we maintain that cheap pricing for the future if we're making them out of plants that are relatively expensive to grow? One answer to that problem is what we call the biorefinery concept, which is to couple together both the cheap biofuels for transportation and then to ask plants to make a range of more valuable chemicals that are used to make plastics and resins and the other materials that enhance our lives. Camelina is a biofuel crop that we can introduce that will actually, I think, improve the sustainability and profitability of our cropping systems. It fits into our wheat-based cropping systems pretty well in the, in the Pacific Northwest, providing a rotation crop that we can grow between wheat crops. In our lower rainfall regions, it doesn't have a lot of high requirements for water or fertilizer or especially pesticides. It's pretty good seed yields and the seed is quite high in oil content, about 40%. When you remove all the oil, it's a pretty high protein content. Cutting edge techniques such as metabolomics, laser microdissection, and phenomics are accelerating the ability of researchers to develop plants with improved capacity for use in biofuels and bioproducts. We're one of the few places in the country and in the world that has the kind of capabilities in terms of the breadth of the metabolites that we can measure, and also with the expertise and biochemical knowledge to know which metabolites are interesting and important for the type of work that we do. The instrumentation capability that we have in the lab, one of them is funded by DOE to look at how regulation of metabolism controls production of compounds, such as biofuel crops, oils, sugars. The instrumentation allows us to measure very, very precisely the molecules that we're interested in studying. The Phenomics Center is a center for trying to figure out how to rapidly determine what characteristics plants have so that we can use that information in breeding better plants for use by the growers in this region. You have a situation where in a given plant you might have 30,000 genes. Right now, at a reasonable cost, we can't ask the question, which 30,000 genes do you have? But we can ask the question, are you growing the way that we want you to grow? Are you doing the things we want you to do? And for that, we look at the whole plant and ask it what it's capable of doing. And that's what we're trying to do by combining rapid sensory methods, fluorescence, other sorts of spectrophotometric methods with a lot of data capture. So we take pictures of things, process those pictures, store those pictures, and attempt to come to some conclusions about which of a large number of plants we're interested in taking further in the breeding process. Fulfilling the mission comes down to two pieces. The first part is to develop the science and technology so that we can compete with the petrochemical industry at scale and cost. The second part of the mission is to train individuals to go into this bioeconomy that we're now generating.
Here is a fluidized bed. This is an important process for many chemical engineering problems where you're taking a catalyst to convert a liquid into something like a fuel or a biofuel. This was funded by the National Science Foundation. This past year, in fact, the Voiland School of Chemical Engineering has received 10% of the nation's funding in this Division of Undergraduate Education for this particular kind of grant. In order for students to become practical and understand the mathematics that go behind modeling this fluidized bed, modeling the chemical reactions, they really need to see it in action. Washington State University's advances in biofuels and bioproducts would not be possible without the large number of partnerships it has cultivated to accomplish its goals. We have partnerships within the institution among plant scientists, microbiologists, engineers, economists, environmental scientists, and outside the institution with Oregon State University, with Pacific Northwest National Lab, with the University of Idaho, and beyond. In the state of Washington, we have some significant companies in the biofuels area, such as Imperium Renewables, Altair, Zia Chem, and we are connecting with them very strongly in many of our research programs so that what we develop is readily applicable to and translatable into industrial practices. Both the U.S. Department of Energy and the U.S. Department of Agriculture are investing millions of dollars at WSU to support biofuel bioproduct research. In 2011, the Northwest Advanced Renewables Alliance, created and led by WSU, received a $40 million grant from USDA to develop a viable woody biomass-based aviation fuel and petrochemical substitute industry in the Pacific Northwest. The ultimate goal is pretty simple. Jobs for Americans, reduction of reliance on imported fossil fuel, and a beneficial impact on the environment.